Welcome to Keyframers, the animated collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Korshid, also known as at David K. Piano. And together we are coding compadres, animation amigos, boolean buddies, and keyframe companions. Yeah, so we're going to be creating just a brand new and we're, we're, we're basically going to be ideating today and drawing up inspiration from scratch and of course we're going to be using html css and a small bit of javascript but you'll see that today's a little bit different that's right uh this show is made possible by your support so head out to patreon.com slash keyframers and uh makes make some pledges there and uh that'll help us keep the lights on here <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, we're also happy to answer any questions you may have. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about some of the things that, you know, we're going to be doing today as well. But yeah, reach out on the Twitch chat or the YouTube comments. We would love to just chat with you about, I don't know, how, how you go from nothing to something, right? How you start with without an idea, without a an animation in mind and just create something new and something unique. And where do you find inspiration for that? Is a tough challenge. Uh, it is our toughest challenge yet. Although, <laughs> honestly, all right. So, just a little bit of background. Um, I'm I've been working on um, you know just for you know my uh, like state machine stuff that I talk about every single episode. I'm working on like some editor tools, and I really want to make just a really cool landing page for it once they're finally released because you know this is a big deal at least for me and it's been months of work so far so uh yeah i just want to create a nice simple landing page and so i have something up already it's not really super crazy though and basically i i want us to have creative freedom and just do something crazy yeah or not crazy but you know uh, so yeah, we're looking at uistates.com. The link there in the chat. Um, See, I didn't even change the background color from black to something more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so tell us a little bit about uh, about what all of this represents. So um, UI states, it's going to be. Uh, an editor for creating these state machines like you see on the right. And wow, I didn't even resolve those fonts. <laughs> so needs a little bit of work. Um, but anyway, it's going to be an editor where you could easily create state machines and state charts and all of that to make um, not only uh, just to organize your application logic, but in fact, to make animations as well. You know? using these visual tools That's pretty and cool. so you, you, you're seeing visual tools being a lot more of a trend nowadays um you know there's been some new ones coming out um even if you look at github actions which just came out that's sort of um going going on the same line so and you you could in fact see sort of, uh, some of the similarities between the two and i'll just post that in the chat as well uh, but it's not animated. But still, this is what I want to create, just so that you know we could have visual tooling for doing the things that we do every day as developers, whether you're front end or back end. So that's where the background there. <clears throat> yeah, GitHub Actions looks super interesting. I'm anxious to uh, get into get into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Are, are you on the beta yet? I am not, no. It does look interesting. I need to... But again, nothing related to animation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. All right. So shall we uh, get into it? Yeah. Yeah. So let's think about, you know, what do we want to do? Let's throw in a little splitting. But actually, first... Let's uh so I have the basic text over here. Yeah. And uh yeah. So let's talk about like how we could actually do something with this. Right. Uh well 
first of all, what what is the main thing you're wanting to communicate when when people land on this page? Uh, basically, two things. Number one, the main headline, which is make your code do more, which is sort of saying, um, you know, here's a tool that allows you to use the same code that you're writing every day and do more, like generate automatic testing, visualization, uh, things like that. And then you have a uh, sign-up form at the bottom, which I did not add yet, but I will. All right. Uh, so you're you're trying to educate people a little bit with this, right? Right. Yeah, and just talk about the benefits of uh, software modeling in general, but also um, what this tool could do for them. Right. Okay. So just yeah. Make your code do more. Hmm. I feel like we could even change some of the wording of the bits too. So, software modeling with UI states makes it possible to fully analyze the logic and behavior of your applications. So, yeah, I would say that. Uh, UI states probably needs to be a little bit more prominent overall. Um, yeah. Like currently, is that is that logo related to that? Uh, sort of. So that's just my own logo, but I'm sure that I'm going to make a different logo <laughs> for UI states itself. Yeah. So, yeah. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for now. I'll add a little bit of CSS grid in there. So, but where do you go for inspiration? Uh, a, a lot of different places. Uh, so one one thing that's always really nice to do is um, get outside of the web for a little bit of inspiration. Um, there's just so many amazing magazines and uh, just general design kind of features, even looking at architecture and the way the way things flow there, uh, taking taking little cues or um, some some kind of central theme, you know, some kind of color or some kind of um, action or movement uh, from one of those things. Um, and then trying to somehow translate that into the web, um, which is often a very interesting challenge. But um, mm -hmm. you know, if if you're just uh, looking at websites for inspiration to make websites, it just becomes kind of this echo chamber. And um, there there were a couple of sites earlier this year or last year making fun of how every site is just like the full screen image with like a headline and like a sign up link and then you know the three buckets down <laughs> yeah. below and you know just there there's very obvious trends and trends are fine you know a lot of times it's a, a ux or ui kind of pattern that people are used to seeing so they know how to interact with it and that's great uh, but that also means you use that you lose a little bit of your uniqueness um, right. So, so how could we do something where we can make this unique? I think like, all right, so we, we've been talking about state machines and stuff. And so, uh, what they are basically boxes connected with arrows. So mm -hmm. maybe we could use some of the things that we've done previously in keyframers and sort of do like, um, either scroll effects or 3d effects or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, well, what like I just really emphasizing like different app states as you know, different rectangles, something like that. Well, I, I'd almost love to see this um, <clears throat> uh, this unordered list uh, kind of become the, you know, state machine-ish visualization with, you know, box and connection and box and connection. Yeah. Um, and that that may help, you know, showcase a little bit of, of what uh, the concept of UI states is and, um, what, what the user can expect a little bit. 
It's actually not a bad idea. I just don't want it to look too corny. <laughs> no, but I, I think that can um, that can look good. Um, yeah, that's yeah. worth playing with. All right, so shall we jump into it? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, do you have a color scheme at all yet? Hmm. Let's do. You know what? Let's start with um, dark body, white text. So background black, color white, lights off. And what I always like to do is not do pure black. Um, either doing like a really deep blue, uh, probably even deeper than that, or more of a uh, charcoal is always um, a good a good approach. Uh, oops. <laughs> and then we could uh, sorry here. Yeah, charcoal like that. It's always really nice. More of a greenish um, charcoal, but that's fine. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm breaking things. Interesting. What did I do? I, I broke some things. There you go. Ah, sweet. Yeah, so right now I'm just adding a grid. And so this is in place of adding, um, you know, padding and all of that, just because um, having a grid as a foundation allows you to have a lot more freedom with how you place things around. Uh, I like to think of like a grid system as just anti-gravity, right? You're sort of escaping the gravity of everything falling into place with padding and, you know, block stacking and all that. If that makes any sort of sense. Yes. Oh. Uh, oh I'm fixing it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brad Woods in the uh, chat said, congrats on X-State version 4. Hey, thanks, Brad. Yeah, so this is sort of what that fits into as well. Um, I didn't release formally X-State version 4. Right now, people, of course, are playing around with it. So that's been in development for months alongside this editor as well. And um, basically, yeah, my goal is I just want to make uh, development, whether we're doing animations or back-end projects or anything, just very, very visual. And so you know, that's why we have a visualizer on there already. And, um, but that's the old version. So I'm trying to work on the new version. And that should be out by the end of the week, uh, too. So, dang. Yeah. That should be cool. Yeah. You know what? Let's, let's throw in some splitting in here as well. <laughs> why not? I'm, I'm completely down for that. Uh, anyways. Yeah. So one of my sources of inspiration, I completely agree with you, looking at magazines and going outside is definitely a great source. But if I want to look at just what other people are doing, besides Dribble itself, of course, awards.com is also a great place to, yes. to look. A W W W A R D S dot com. Yeah, I, I I always have to spell it out when I <laughs> tell people where to go for that. Uh, man, uh, I don't know why they boofed up uh, Chrome's full screen UI so badly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This site is is always a great collection of uh, beautiful sites. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to, hmm, I'm thinking of something. What if I do, um, I have this UI state chart class, and I have three states in there. Because you, you were talking about like representing, actually, oh, I have even something probably better. 
yeah, so let's take these, um, call them UI concepts, just because they're different concept ideas, but whatever. Anyway, so I'm thinking these UI concepts, we could do sort of an isometric sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we could show them as states like you, like you said. So UI concepts, let's uh, this position absolutes 100%. This is going to look terrible right now. Yep, sword looks terrible. That's totally fine. It's meant to look terrible. Um, oh, display block. Is it weird? You're, you're having fun with these colors. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is not the intended color there. Two, two, two. Oh, because it's in that UI content section. Right. Yeah, I think my secondary monitor here is not calibrated <laughs> very well at all. So choosing colors there is not, not the best move. <laughs> so how are you liking it over at CodePen? For those of you who don't know, Shaw is over at uh, CodePen. That's right. You can see the logo plastered <laughs> behind me. Um, yeah, it's it's been really great. Uh, this, this is my third week, I guess, and I've been, uh, been able to participate in some of the uh, exciting upcoming things that I can't tell you anything about just yet uh but what? You, you should be should be seeing some stuff in the next uh next couple of weeks um that i you haven't I even told me i i have not i've <laughs> been a <Heck>. vault <laughs> uh no it's 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 good stuff um you'll you'll enjoy it um some some ui based stuff all right, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. I I don't know what it is at all. I want to know. I want you to tell me, but you're not going to tell me. That's okay. <laughs> Soon. All right, so I I'm making these dates. So uh, in line block. Of course, we probably have to get rid of the. Uh, Get rid of the list styles as well. Or sorry, the uh Oh yeah. Or actually all right, so um just thinking about how I style the states in the so let's make it background white, color black, and of course these these are things that we could change later. But this this whole um stike type <laughs> Yeah. There's a CSS thing. Yeah, I'm doing things just interrupting yeah so with your concept we could go further with css grid and say um yeah there we go uh we could um we could do a display grid and just arbitrarily place these dates along the grid Oh wow, so funny enough, Display Grid just automatically did that for each of our states, which is pretty cool. Uh, but thinking, thinking, so. Are you, you're trying to like layer them, essentially? Sort of, sort of. So actually let's do grid template columns, repeat one FR four. So we're gonna have a four by four grid. And that way we could just, uh, you know, we could just have them arbitrarily placed. For one hour. Ah, uh, is it the other way around? Yeah. I'm, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> we oh, do not claim okay. to be <laughs> uh, CSS grid experts. Not yeah, I'm not an expert. But yeah, we'll do that for now. Now, to do isometric styles, which I don't believe we did uh, yet in this episode, um, to figure out how to do that. Because I know you're you're going to be using 3D transforms, but there's also some tricks regarding the um, 
the perspective as well and how much you rotate it so that it's uh so that it is um isometric right there's there's been some good uh good code pins on this recently um there's that one that's like a shoe shoe store let me see yeah isometric e-commerce grid yeah this is a good one Yeah, we'll go look at code pen. You know, isometric cube, cool. Yeah, this is the one I'm thinking of. Ah, oh, man, I really wish. Oh, cool, Chrome. wow, yeah. Really wish Chrome would fix that <laughs> issue. Um, yeah, pasting that link in the chat here. Um, so yeah, you can get some pretty rad effects. Um, let me see. We can figure it out in the editor view here. Grid columns, repeat three. Yeah, yeah so it's just some crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy rotation. Mm-hmm. Just using skew. Yeah. You have to use skew. Uh, that's that's what uh, this pin is using. Um, I, I think there's other approaches to it, but. So I'm gonna add a few more too. I feel like I should just add eight or so. Or maybe nine. Let's uh, see. Yeah, there's this is the is the other one I, I've seen by by this developer. Um, isometric layout with CSS grid. He's got a, a great article on it. Andy Andy Barefoot. Uh, oh. Cool. Where it's like some movie movie quotes. Um, yeah, breaking it down. Yep, and then just using skew y. It's cool. Hmm. Yeah, so basically I just need to know all right, so and he's using CSS grid too. Mm -hmm. Um all right, so you do have to skew it then. Yeah, I think that be the right approach. Right, or so I I totally thought that it was just some sort of three D trans. Oh no, so it is a three D transform. So we're rotating on the like let's say the z axis, and we're also skewing. So rotate z, skew y. All right, so let's yeah. Let's figure that out for this. Well, that will make it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, rotate X. Oh, okay, it's gonna be a lot of playing around. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, is that more what you were thinking? Let me see. Um. Oops. Wow. Sorry. Now these are just going everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I had it just a second ago, like that. Let me see. Let me see. So ideally, it's all sort of in the grid. So I'm thinking that maybe this whole thing should go on like the actual UI concepts thing. So transform, let's see. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. That's something. Um, then skew. All right, so is this the wrong way? Yeah, I, the the math there, I am not sure of. Because just switching this to 30 and that to negative 60, I don't think was... Okay, there we go. Ah, there we go. That's it. Yep. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to make this... Yeah, so the the idea is maybe, you know, each one of these that we hover. Oh, well, let's see, transform style preserve 3D. Wondering if that'll do anything because let's say that you want to hover over these and like sort of just get more information. So, uh, you know, at first it could be opacity 0.5. Also going to add a transition all perfect seconds eats out. And nothing's happening on hover. Yeah. I see that you added uh, some splitting too. So, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, just haven't really done anything with it yet. Um, yeah, so we need to set the perspective to like right. 1,000 pixels or so. Ah, uh, yeah, but it sort of <laughs> it sort of zooms in. Uh, yeah, that, a, which is a little bit weird. Well, it needs to be perspective pixels, I believe. In the actual transform. Yeah, some sometimes that's the. No. Uh, then it needs to be on the parent, I believe. So UI main perspective. Thousand pixels, transform style, preserve three D, and kind of. Um, let's take this down here. Hmm. I'm trying to see how they did. Um, there was a CoDrops article on um, just this 3D transform stuff. And it's actually really, really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and share that in the chat. So Brad was asked if I ended up going with NDX for the XT docs rewrite. Yeah, so the docs rewrite is still in the process. And for those who don't know what MDX is, it's like Markdown Extended, sort of like JSX is JavaScript Extended. Um, and it allows you to put React components right inside your Markdown files. So you could have really dynamic contents right inside your Markdown. Um, and so that's useful, obviously, for a lot of things, including adding the visualizer, which I am going to be doing uh, either tomorrow or the next day. So, nice. yeah. So if you saw that link I sent in the, um, let's see, uh, it sort of shows um, just what I'm trying to go for. But the problem is like it does a whole matrix 3D uh, sort of thing, which I'm not sure how that's happening, but yeah, yeah. that's what's happening. Yeah, it's probably using GSAP. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at the UI concept. Um, so yeah, this entire thing is transformed and skewed, which is fine. Uh, but let's see, translate C. Well, if we translate Y, what happens? Oh, it just like slides up. That's not, that's yeah. definitely not what we yeah, want. Yeah, Z, Z is, what we, is what we want. Um, well, so it's, yeah, we want it to go up, like in our upward direction. So I think that's actually a mixture of uh, to be oh yeah, I, I know what it is. To uh, translate 3D really quick, and ah, 
like let's see, sorry. Yep. See that's what we are wanting. Yeah. We just have so to get the perspective the the angle of everything hmm. right. So does that mean we have to not use skew? Uh that, that's fine. I mean we could figure it. In fact, it doesn't even need to be isometric, although it's sort of a cool effect. Yeah. Um, good gravy. Uh, going to add overflow hidden for the time being, so we can just not have that wig out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Let's why take did, a look. At why did the translate stop working? I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, because we don't have a perspective. Uh, the perspective is up on the on the parent UI main. Yeah, but it doesn't propagate down to the uh, parent components. So, yeah, if you do preserve three D, then that's that's what that's doing. Is it's carrying that perspective? It's unifying that perspective all throughout um, those. Yeah, but then why doesn't it work? Because <laughs> you broke something. I broke nothing. See, if I add the perspective, it works. Mm. Not, not quite. Yeah, see, now it's working. I think I think the overflow hidden that I added was, was messing with it for some reason. Ah, OK. Yeah. This should really be more like that. And then perspective. If we need to rotate X as well. Yeah, it might need to be just a general rotate. Yeah, until we get it right. And this is what dev tools are really helpful for too. Oh, yeah, we went back to skew. Uh, I'm just trying it out. Let's see. Hmm. I think if we do a combination of X and Y, that yeah might help out. Let's see, in the meantime. Let's add a custom font. What's your go-to source? I use Google Fonts. Is there a better one? Uh, I haven't specifically found one. Um, you know, type kits out there, and that's fine. Um, but I think they just recently got to the point where it was actually you know free to use at least in part. Right. Yeah. So yeah, if we, um, here, let's try this. We're going to embed this font, and I'm just going to do a simple import. Just uh, let me use Roboto. Domo Arigato. So fonts family Roboto and serif. So yeah, now we have that Roboto. This look great. And yeah, in the chat, if you want to um, give us suggestions, you know, we could make this really uh, something where anyone can contribute to. And this, this, uh, <laughs> This isometric thing is pretty crazy, pretty hard. <laughs> it is getting a little, a little crazy. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm.
just gonna add the button real quick to get up the uh Ah, there we go. Okay, so we don't want 3D transforms at all to, to just make it um, that flat, isometric really? style. Really? Okay. Yeah. Can we face it the other way? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 it took me this long there we to go. get it there we go. to that point, David. <laughs> that's don't... it. That's it. <laughs> that is, that's awesome. Sometimes you can't be picky with. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it works, it's not what you want, but uh, it's what you're going to get. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, um, Zero to All right, so yeah, now how to make the uh, the text stand out. And what's cool about this and you know using UI grid is that we can make it do something different in mobile too. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's always fun to make mobile designs where it's um, it's not just stacking on top of each other for mobile, but instead it does something like completely different. Hmm. <laughs> so what are you trying out right now? I'm just playing around with, with splitting on the code, uh, on the awesome. headline. It's called UI email. Yeah. So again, if you don't know splitting, splitting is the um, is a tool that Shaw made for making it really, really easy to uh, to split words, split letters. I think it's a splitting.js.com org, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, lots of really cool things possible with it. I'm going to add a, uh, some CSS variables, color primary. And that's something I'll typically do is I'll prefix all my colors with color. And then I'll base the color on what its purpose is rather than what the actual color is. So I'm not going to call it color blue unless I really want it to be blue. Like blue is its semantic meaning. but. That never happens. So uh, let's see background color there, color primary. And so color white, order none. Cool. So we have a little subscribe button. And also, you could sort of do the same thing for uh, font sizes as well, like just prefix it with. I don't even know. Font size. Or font size one, that's going to be one rem. Font size zero, that's going to be 0 0.8 rem. So we can say the subscribe button is uh, font size there, font size zero. And we can make that smaller, font weight bold. Like that. Uh, that I, I always lean towards uh, font size base, font size small, font size large. Um, Life's too short for typing. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what if you needed smaller than zero? 
Start doing negative one. Yes, and that's with the. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, at, you, with, with you make a good point. All right. With this, <laughs> with this setup, you can't really go more than you know five or six. Uh, with larger, large base and small and smaller. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're giving like a double um, semantic meaning, which yeah, that definitely works. That's just kind of been my go-to since uh, preprocessor variable days. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Ah, so you're making the text like really pop. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. That's that's one of splitting strong points. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna, let's see, this, um, these concepts are, they get pretty wide, so I'm trying to think about how we could probably limit the width on that, make it like 50%. Yeah, and then, and then we could put these concepts, which, uh, yeah, let's, let's change the grid up a bit as well so one if our one if our three rems cool so that means that we could put this ui concepts on let's see um row or grid bless you sorry sorry column three four so that's why it makes a little bit more sense to have named columns because this is failing me for whatever reason. Oh, because I have a positioned absolute. That's why. Why would I do that? <laughs> no wonder it's not going to work. OK. Display grid, but it should be grid column 3, 4. Yeah. Two, two, three, three, four. Let's see where this is right now. Yeah, oddly enough, um so I'm I'm trying to get the squares to go on the right side, but they are they're not behaving Let's see. right now. What are you doing? Oh, all you need to do version left auto. Well hmm. <laughs> No, be because I, I wanted to um this is so weird. I want this whole UI concept section to be because right now the grid is um we have the gutters on the right and the left, and then we have it split down the middle as well. That's a three, uh, three, one of our, one of our, or actually, we could do this 50%, 50%. All right. Nope, that did not do it. Let's get rid of this. Nope. UI grid is a beast. <laughs> it's okay. It's a really good beast to to learn. Yes. Yeah, I recommend it. Um, just gonna. And yeah, all we're doing is rotating it, so I'm not sure why it would would not be behaving. Let's. Get rid of this transform real quick and see where it actually ends up. Yep, nope, it's not supposed to end up there. Look at that. Well, don't you want it to be two? Oh, you know what? Sorry, hold on. <laughs> I, 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 I know what happened. 
I don't have um this is in the main section, so I have to do display grid, grid, template columns, one fr, one fr, and then it's only one row anyway. All right, cool. Yeah, so the um Yeah. So the UI con or yeah, the UI heading is in the top. So the UI concepts or sorry, the UI content also needs to be on the left as well. So well, I what just we can the, just move the UI heading inside of UI content. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. So yeah, now that makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Cool, so that looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, um, of course we could adjust the line height. So, let's see. What are some other cool animation stuff that we could do here? How about something that, you know, I've noticed is that um, having some sort of animation or something that really makes the, um, the sign in form pop. Or not pop that's a terrible term to use but stand uh, out. you know just really stand out in terms of animation hmm. yeah making it large it's a good idea um where is button, ui email form Let's forget. Back. Yeah, something like that. So maybe I should make this a little bit wider. Okay, so you're centering it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Having having that kind of being the, the main anchor point of the site. Right. That's right. Oh, so by the way, there was a Leah Baru, who um, is, a, of course, a wealth of information when it comes to, well, a lot of things on the web, but especially CSS. There, there was a trick that she posted about a while ago regarding um, input focus. Um, With focus where, visible? Or if you still want to be accessible, but you want to hide a uh, focus that is um, that's uh, you know for someone who's not using a keyboard, you could do that. I just have to have to find it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's the focus visible um, selector, which uh, I was looking into today yeah. uh, for some code pen stuff. Um, some accessibility there, uh, and it has awful browser support. It's like, uh, oh really? Uh, latest Firefox, and then Chrome behind a flag, maybe. It's it's a great you know just like kind of future proofing progressive enhancement idea, but um, not not too great uh, right now for just general use. Uh, but it's it's worth checking out if you uh, dig into the docs there. Hmm. Oh, well then, you know, maybe never mind. <laughs> we'll we'll deal with the focus state as is. Which is totally fine. All right, so we have a get early access to the beta, which is for that email thing. And then yeah. So funny enough, I did this pretty cool um and I showed you before, but uh, like this animation 
where once you click subscribe, it did this cool thing and then it said, all right, you're subscribed. However, the way that this form works is it takes you to a separate page, which is completely fine. But um, yeah, so no one ever got to see that animation, which <laughs> fine by me. Quite cool, so we could actually make this transparent, and then we could border bottom to full solid HVA back. So, it's kind of weird. What's weird? Uh, if you check out the um, the hover states, uh, when you, I mean, it looks fine. Well, yeah, but when you hover off of it. That that little shadow I was leaving uh, just pops out or pops off. Is it supposed to do that? Well, it's supposed to stay anchored, and they're supposed to be moving at the same time. Uh, ah, okay. So let's see what you're doing. I think it might be. All right. So so, so you have it. Um, hmm. So you have it moving at the same speed then. Right, they're moving at the same speed and with the same um, easing. But whenever you hover off, let's see, let's keep that all in picks. Yeah, that's weird. I feel like if you add like a wheel change transform, that actually might help, oddly enough. Oh yeah, adding that white uh, will be very nice for that form. No difference. The problem with the color 666 is it's a pretty nice color. Like, it's a nice gray to use, but it's an evil color. It is. So I've opted to think 667. Yeah, I, I always round up just to be safe with that. Okay, cool. So we have some stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Shadow. I think we need a. Well, there's barely a border there. Oh, because I have border none. You ever do that? Where. You're like, why is this not showing up? And then you have this random property. So that's one of the good things and bad things about CSS is that you could have these, you know, it's very resilient. You know, if you have invalid properties, it's not going to yell at you. If you have properties defined more than once, it's not going to yell at you. Um, yeah. It's just really kind and forgiving which is sort of a problem. A little too kind. Yeah, basically. All right, so... Hmm.
So um, loop844 asks, do you guys ever use React? How do you prefer to manage styles? That's a really good question. Uh, so Shaw, I know that you now, you have to work on the React side, right? I have to, yes. You uh, have to, you sound very, very enthusiastic about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so i've i've been uh getting a lot more into react um just as um that is most of what uh the code pen base is using um or or not even the base what what code pen is moving towards um there's a lot of the newer features of the site that are built on it and they've they put out some good, uh, some good podcast episodes on that, so uh, you should definitely check that that all out. Um, but so far, uh, the styles are all still very separate from the components. Uh, they, they've you know got some got some webpack setups with you know various style sheet uh, groups and uh, and those all get get compiled together. But they're they're a little a little too divorced from the the actual component uh, for my liking. Um, I I come from a uh, a view background primarily, and the setup there with you know your your template, your script, and your style all in one file, I found to be just such a great um, en encouragement to encapsulate as much as possible. Um, and I would still use like a global style sheet for the the just general look and feel of of the non JavaScripty portions, uh, but but yeah, what what is your typical approach with uh, managing styles in React? So it's an interesting story because for the longest time I was very against inline styles and CSS and JS, so it's called, uh, where instead of managing your styles in a style sheet, you're managing it directly in the JavaScript files. Um, however, uh, Glenn Mattern and um, I think I don't know, it was Mark Delgage or so, no, 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 it was um, yeah, Glenn Mattern and Max Stoiber, actually. They came up with styled components, which is like SAS, pretty much like what we do over here. Um, and it's actually, it actually felt like a really good solution because you're writing your basically SAS code, but you're doing it directly in JavaScript. And so that compiles down to class names and then it just auto applies those class names for you. So that's a nice way to keep your componentized styles. But what I find is that it clutters up your actual component JavaScript. And so as an alternative, you could use CSS modules. Now, the latest Create React app came out I think like a month or so ago. And in it, it has support not only for CSS modules, but also for SAS as well. So you could also install Node SAS on top of your Create React app installation. And you could add CSS mod, or you don't even have to add CSS modules. You just add dot module dot CSS or dot SCSS to your style sheets, and boom, you're ready to go. Working on SAS styles and having it like spit out the correct class names for you. Um, yeah, so it's pretty nice. Basically, what I like to do is, however, I like to work at CSS just normally like what we do over here where we just um we just do it like with sass and you know in the style sheet and we have these class names i want to do the exact same thing in react and so that's sort of my workflow Do we get rid of transitions? Uh, I I took off the transition all um, on uh, at the very top to just try and debug this, but it is still eluding me. 
Hmm. No worries. But yeah, styled components is great. There's a couple others too. There's emotion. There's um, linearia. I think it's called. Basically, they come out like with a new one every day. My recommendation, personally, and I mean, don't take what I say as a gospel because it's sort of the opposite. But um, just stick with something that lets you write plain CSS. Some people are like, oh, I could just use JavaScript object D notation, not JSON, but close enough to JSON in my JavaScript. And that's just fine for my styles. It looks close enough to CSS. I'm just replacing semicolons with commas and I'm adding a lot more quotes than necessary, but it's okay. However, when it comes to when you need to copy CSS styles, then that becomes a little bit of a headache. You have to go do it manually or find some random website that says, okay, yeah, here, just copy paste your CSS and we'll give you JavaScript code, but it's less than ideal. So. Yeah. So I sort of try to stay away from that. I mean, if you don't need to, then, you know, why bother? through all that extra trouble. What do they use over at CodePen? Are you allowed to say? Uh, for <laughs> for what? For um, styling their JavaScript. Uh, that is is all pretty much just SAS uh, style sheets. Um, it's really yeah. There there really aren't any. Uh, styled components that I've run across yet or, or anything along those lines. Um, yeah, I, I would like to at least have that kind of set up overall for something that's going to be completely, you know, react driven um, and, and not, you know, make its way onto um, static areas of the site. But it's... Um, Kind of a, a hodgepodge right now. Hodgepodge, it's a good way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Part of part of what I'm doing is helping migrate some some of the sections to, you know, newer newer code bases and you know, as we we're going through just improving uh the the UX and the and the overall code to be a lot more unified that's good i mean that's definitely a good um good initiative to do and that's something that i wish a lot more companies did as well uh, right so. I, I think that's something that's that's really necessary uh for um uh for you know a, a product your your responsibility is to maintain you know this this product and and make sure it's uh, the best it can possibly be. So um, that is important to do, keeping your code base clean so that new features and new things can um, can come in. Yeah. Okay. So part of the issue is opacity. Um, why why doesn't opacity work? Uh, so uh, it has to do with the way it's shifting things off to the GPU, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so what if you do like a a will change transform? It doesn't that. help. Does not help. Oh. God bless. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's all good.
Hmm. I think we could use CSS grid to position this. Get early access to beta type of thing. There we go. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, back back to that issue. Uh, opacity has has a way of sometimes forcing a layer onto uh, the GPU, um, but I th mm -hmm. I think the way it was it was handling it. Uh, for for these, it was doing that independent of the uh, the actual 3D transform, and then so the the sub layers of that were being flattened uh, when it was when it was not fully uh, opaque, and then whenever it would transition to fully opaque, you'd get the um, the actual 3D for its its children. Gotcha. So that explains a lot. Um, let's see. Is this get early access to the bay like anchored to the bottom or? Uh, it is not. It's probably just being forced off by the grid, uh, the the 3D grid. Um, right. Yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. Now. Uh, that you you probably want to set up um, some rows in your in your grid layout, and then yeah. and then that uh, uh, that grid one can uh, the 3D grid can. Yeah. Expand. Uh, there we go. Just doing fifty percent, fifty percent. What I've been slowly learning is that you shouldn't really rely on FR. Like I, I've been using FR, which stands for God knows how many things. Um, what What is the official abbreviation? Oh, I have no idea. I think it's a uh, free free space. I, in In my mind, it's just frame, I, and I that frame makes no something. logical There's, sense, but. There's so many different things it could be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. I'm thinking of an animation. And this is what I like about this is where we could just completely do something crazy. But thinking of like this get early access to the beta thing um sort of coming in from 3d like as if it were part of that isometric grid which now i have to figure out how the heck you did that again um <laughs> all right rotate x 45 degrees rotate z negative 45 degrees simple enough i think uh anyway so let's see if we do this to the form transform you get okay cool uh and then we get an animation so enter form and just have that over one second keep this a is five zero five one e frames enter Form. And so what's cool is we could take that transform and just make it go back to real life. Wonder how well that'll look. <laughs> Not very well. Uh, but we could change the transform origin in order to sort of help with that. In the top. <sighs> That's wrong. Uh, top right, maybe, sort of. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna keep doing this until I. Uh, 
so I'm satisfied with it. Uh, bottom left, bottom right, maybe. This sword looks bad, better, no? <laughs> uh, sure. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't make it isometric. Maybe I should just make it uh, come in from the bottom. So transform, trans, translate, translate y, percent opacity zero, and then you know have that come to one or so. Do we have a? Um, on UI main, we have that like uh, perspective, right? Uh, no, we don't. No, it's uh, we we have no actual three D perspective uh, on the on the isometric view. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and cause... so yeah, the isometric view should definitely uh, stay like that. So let's take the form. It's getting a bit annoying, so we want to. Make that two second interval now. <laughs> uh, so let's see, transform, translate Y, but let's also rotate C negative 20 degrees and rotate X negative 30 degrees. See how that looks. Wrong way. Yeah, something like that. Unless you think that looks terrible. Uh, it needs a little bit of tweaking, but... You're right. I wouldn't say terrible. In fact, maybe this should not be even in Translate Y at all. Or, no, I still have the Transform Margin on my that's probably why. Alright, so maybe we do need that Translate Y. Don't know. There we go. So yeah, this is more of what I'm going for. Uh -huh, yes. So yeah, basically the idea is just to give it this this feeling of it being freeform boxes everywhere where you know yeah i think that feels good mm -hmm. let's see Well, that's interesting. <laughs> it's like we're playing a game of a uh, clue <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm playing around with it. Um, not not fully sold on it, but um, translate. See, I mean. I did say creative freedom, so <laughs> Just are you are you regretting that now? I'm not I'm not I am one hundred percent game for whatever. Although this hmm. Okay. Let's see in the form. Active origin. Oh, 
Well, that's completely wrong. I'm trying to make the button sort of uh, pop out a little bit from the bottom and it certainly we're doing is. something a little bit crazy right now. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Let's see how we can fix that. Translate Z 30, 50 pixels scale. Because the problem is it still looks flat. Yeah. Which, maybe it's not. Yeah, maybe I just won't bother with that. Well, we will make it flat. It's totally fine. Hmm. No, I don't know how I feel about the clue style cards. <laughs> Feels like we're gonna be playing a game of whack a mole or something. All right, all right. <laughs> so, creative freedom squashed. All right. What's your go-to uh, media query for mobile styles? Like six hundred pixels max width. Or something like that. Yeah, I mean, even even bumping it up to around seven or eight hundred, just because you know, at that at that size, typically most like two column layout kind of starts breaking down, anyway. Right. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Let's see, uh, UI concepts. Uh, and in the chat, to get access to the beta, you have to get a certain score in whack a mole. <laughs> That's actually a pretty cool idea. Like, just Make it a game for people to uh, <laughs> to get access to the beta. That'd right. be pretty cool. There's there's all this talk about gamifying UIs, right? Yeah, I mean, that would be it. All right, so I had a few simple styles to. I'm gonna move this image just for now. It's gonna be even more teaser. Up sort of like a preview image, which is fine. All right, because in mobile, it's just going to be boxes. But right now, these are sort of hidden. So I want to know what the heck's going on. In, in UI main, I have to do overflow Y auto. Yep, there we go. Why are you overflowing? Um, oh. just for, oh, so I guess I, you know what? I'm going to do this in the media query. That's what I meant this to do. So I have a mobile media query right. over at the bottom. And so that's the only place that that overflow should go. Yeah. I take it you're not a mobile first design <laughs> uh well i mean it's more of a know your audience sort of thing so if you're if you're making a ui tool for the web then you know however that that's not to say that it's not good to um you know to do stuff like that and do mobile first you you should always try to i was just being naughty Hmm. So now I'm actually 
just because this is all about sort of software modeling. So um, if I could do like a uh, grid sort of background. Um, yeah, you know what, let's try that. Uh, let's see. Just gonna copy something here and then I can explain what it is. So basically we're using a background image um, for the body. Uh, and so that's going to, right now it's going to be green. So just to show you what's going on. And so we can change these to, let's see, RGBA Y0.1. And then we can change that to RGBA Y0.1. I guess the person who I took this from used M's, which of course the M's are wrong. So. You're so right. <laughs> well, oh, you know what? That should be pixels anyway. Pixel uh, one pixel. Where are you? Okay. Yeah. Just doing some fun uh, grid like background images. So, the, the way to get it repeating is to have just this background size. And by default, backgrounds repeat. So. Just going to make it explicit background repeats, repeats. And so that's going to, um, yeah, just make that repeat. And so now we have that grid. But we can make this even smaller and do like one rem. That's going to be pretty small. Yeah, a little bit too small. Maybe two rem. And Shaw's making it a little bit more subtle, so. Even more subtle. Oh, wow. Subtlety is key. <laughs> yeah. Now let's see, this is trim, trim. Rim. If I do a cover here, then I could do gradient to bottom. Let's see what happens there. Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely not what we want, but cool. Uh, add and then just. Color because used darken, which is good because then we could do that. Now, oddly enough, the order, the order of um, just the background images, it's sort of weird. Where the uh, the first one that you put on, that's like the top one, right? Yeah, looks like it. So. You want the one that's at the very back to be the very last one, which sort of doesn't make sense, but yeah, I, I think it's a backwards compatibility sort of thing. The the top layer you want visible first, and uh, browsers that didn't support multiple backgrounds having that last one at least work. Yeah, was maybe the concept there. That's what I always assumed. I have not read the documentation or the spec to sure but yeah all right cool interestingly enough now um the the sign up form sort of uh is underneath the whole uh grid thing oh which i think might be is that a z index issue or is that a uh actual 3D issue, because if it's 3D, we could fix it a different way. Uh, a little of both, Great. potentially. Let's see, transform style, preserve 3D. I just added a Z index 10, and oh, nope, that didn't do it. 
You have to go all the way to a thousand, at least. <laughs> nah, but another way is since it's a thousand, we could um. Hmm. Let's see, Let's see, five hundred pixels scale. Whoa. <laughs> okay. And then sort of do the same thing over here. And it's still on the bottom. Interesting. What if we uh all right, because the UI concepts, those are being rotated. Um, right. Let's see, you're rotating X 45 degrees, which means it's going. Some way. Uh, I think, uh, so X axis rotating like that. Yeah, something like that. You're going it's rotating this way. Well, sometimes it's rotating this way. That's <laughs> something I never quite remember. Uh, so let's just do translate Z negative 10 pixels. Hmm. Oh, right. Let's see here. Uh huh. You, I mean. Fifty percent auto one FR. So what's that for? Uh, we... to to give to give this a little bit more of a span um, so that they would overlap um, that way this was more like a background element um, but there are probably other ways to do that yeah hmm I'm wondering why the overflow doesn't really work uh, in mobile view oh because yeah, I've got overflow hidden because of the 3D transform on HTML and body. Ah, but the main, that should be the one where, the, where we're allowed. Uh, oh, but maybe, oh, no, you know you... what? I probably don't have the uh, height 100% on main. Percent. Well, it's, okay. it's also got that weird padding um, with the grid frame. Um, so you would want that, um, you'd want the body and everything to just overflow. Uh, ah, gotcha. You know what? That's, that's actually a lot easier to just a body for flow Y auto. And then that should, yeah, that just works. Cool. Now, um, and mobile styles are easy. <laughs> can be. Uh, 
Oh, so we have some fun uh, Wii stuff going on here. And then mobile looks okay. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just kind of a a sketch, if you will. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. One thing: what if this uh, the do more were just the words and not the uh, letters? Yeah, that's an easy enough switch. I tried that um, initially. Um, so just take that out and then do word index. Uh oh, did we get rid of the um hmm. of the grid in the UI main? The grid in the UI main? No, it's it's still there. Because the uh make your code do more it's sort of hugging the left side. Okay. I don't know if it's that way for you. Hugging the left side. Uh, or wait, is it the UI main? Yeah. Or no, not the UI main, the uh the body. It's really weird. I am not sure. Okay, what's going on here? Why is this Yeah, for some reason the um the body is a Escape, or the uh, the content is escaping the grid of the UI main. Is escaping hmm. grid? Let's see what that is. All right, UI contents. Let's make that grid column. Two, grid, row, one, two. We're oh, sorry. Nope. One, two. And then with hundred percent. Oh. Hmm. I figure out why that is. But yeah, we have that. Uh, you know what? Maybe it's this. No, it can't be that. Uh, sorry, where is UI form? Bottom. Okay, go around. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe it was the align item center, justify content center type of stuff. Maybe. I, I am getting that overflow kind of on the on the bottom. Um if if you are on a shorter window, uh the the subscribe form kind of pops out. Uh, so one thing um, we can do here <laughs> well. <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, so now it's on top of everything. It's great. Yeah, doing doing three D transforms and all that can can get really uh really messy. Um, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Hmm. 
Yeah, wow. This now seems to come in from God knows where. <laughs> and just like pop in. Actually, what if we um Yeah, just That didn't exactly work. Translate Y. So translate Z. Let's, let's see if we get rid of that translate Z. What happens? At scale five. Still sort of playing around with things. And then uh Let's form top left. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, there we go. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, and then of course we can make that one second. Hmm. Oh, that feels nice. Like if you make the scale a little bit more subtle and then it just Right. It really it really pops out. So cool. Oh. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Yeah, speed that up a little bit. Yeah, it feels that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're really having fun with it. <laughs> oh yeah. Although I did like the solo rotation. Got rid of it. it yeah. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, I like it. Now, hmm, I'm trying to think if we have time to do one more quick, just for fun, little Easter eggy thing that is also uh, related to state machines, sort of. Uh, how and that's sorry. How quick? Actually, it's probably not quick, so we could <laughs> forget about it. I was going to say make the uh, make the form drag and droppable, but I think this is good for now, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think we can do a follow up if we if we want, uh, but I think this is a good good stopping point for now. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm tempted to do it with CSS variables in in just a few lines, 
All right. Yeah. You got I, I think we're good. we're good though. <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> all right. All right. Don't don't want to get too crazy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, let me uh, transition us over to Keyflections. Woo! This is the yeah. quick review of some of the techniques we use to build this animation. Uh, if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask. Uh, so uh, pop in to the chat and we'll be happy to answer. Yeah, and remember that uh, if you've enjoyed watching this so far, follow and subscribe here on Twitch or YouTube or pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers. Key links are available below and you're gonna want to because we're you know we're coming up with some stuff especially in 2019 so uh, right. yeah keyframe.rs keyframe.rs yeah uh and uh you'll you'll definitely want to want to stay tuned into that yeah uh so yes uh david is on the verge of releasing uh ui states a uh beautiful library uh, to help you analyze uh, state machine logics. Uh, thanks for stopping by a loop. Um, and wanted to take some time to just play around with some animations for the site, tweak tweak yeah. some design for it. Um, and I think it's a vast improvement, what we've done. <laughs> yeah, it's it's certainly less generic. At least generic. In two hours, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think there's there's room for improvement, but this is uh more a more a concept point. or or a sketch if you will um so we're using uh css grid uh to to a large degree um for the for the layout uh and then um we use splitting for this for this nice little do more um bit let me toggle over to <laughs> Uh, the non auto updating preview so we can rerun as we talk through do more uh, sliding in so uh, I've, I'm targeting those specific words uh, based on the attributes that splitting adds um, which is just so handy um, and then from there we get to uh, animate those really simple animation there Mm -hmm. um, I don't even need the perspective there anymore. Um, yeah, I, I made slide up instead of a. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's good. Uh, and then for the concepts here, uh, we have done a three D transform, um, making it rotate X this way and rotate. No, sorry, rotate X. So starting out, it's like this, or starting out, it's like this, then rotate X brings it this way, rotate Z brings it this way. It's a really good visual. <laughs> uh, this has been my uh, armrest. Uh, nice. Uh, yes, so that's, that's what our 3D transform is here. Uh, transform style preserve 3D so that that, uh, th that carries through to the children. Um, I've got multiple pseudo elements happening there for the children to give a little bit of the 3D pop effect with the with the shadow. Um, yeah, we could even make that shadow fuzzy by adding a making it a box shadow. Um, mm -hmm. And then and that gives a nice little little subtlety to it. All right, uh, and you want to talk through the form? Yeah, so the form, um, you know, just your simple run the mill form. So, but the animation, I decided to do a little bit of a 3D exploration over here, just making it come in. Um, now we had to do a little bit of a, I don't know if you want to call it a hack or anything, but, um, by um, giving it perspective, we could get it on top of that grid. And the way that it does that is we're... Um... Actually, can you explain the perspective? This is something that I should probably learn too. <laughs> uh, so 
perspective can be applied in multiple ways. Uh, you can actually apply perspective as a transform function. Uh, mm -hmm. And that that gives you a lot more fine grain control uh, over the over the three D transform, meaning you you could do some transforms first and then apply perspective, and then the the transforms after that would would be uh, perspectivized. Um, so the perspective is basically just how intense the three D effect is. Uh, if if you have a really low perspective, like if we change this down to ten pixels it's going to uh, seem insane. <laughs> That's actually an extremely cool effect. <laughs> I, I don't want to add it, but it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can use that to great effect. Um, and and by, by having um, perspective in, in the transform like this, uh, you, you can animate that. So you could, you could change the amount of, of perspective that's happening, uh, which you could do that with the uh, just plain old perspective. Uh, property as well, but uh, you get more control here, uh, and then that the the translate y and the scale don't really have any any kind of three D um, meaning there, but the rotate x again that's that's taking it from here to more like uh, starting here into that, um, so that's that's what gives that nice. 3D perspective. If we if we take that off, you can see how um, how different that feels. Because basically, uh, when it's when it's rotating x with no perspective, it's it's just kind of this. I don't know. It's it's a weird uh, flat effect. Um, so just adding a little bit of perspective gives that a little more realistic of a of a movement to the to the eye. And kind of places yeah. it in 3D space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so one of the important things in this episode was that things were changing a lot, and um, that's part of the the, the whole creative process, um, where sometimes things that you think will look good do not look good, and things that you think might be boring or might be too, you know, non pretty might actually work well. So. Uh, yeah, I'm still on the fence about this isometric grid, but I thought it was a good idea at the time. So, <laughs> well, it's technically not well, isometric anymore because it's right. it's actually yeah. 3D. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I I think there's I think there's definitely room for um, room for improvement overall. But uh, yeah. one one thing that uh, I would encourage y'all to do is is get into uh, the the browser. A lot faster with your design process uh, because if you prototype in the browser then it's only a short step to make that prototype a real real thing um, and most of the short steps are just improving your code cleaning things up and adding responsive styles and browser support uh, which is a, a long uh, ways ahead of if you just designed it all in Photoshop uh, that would be a much more intense process. Uh, by by doing it in the browser as well, you get a much a much more uh, grounded in web technology style design. Uh, you can take advantage of the web strengths like consistent styles with text. That's one thing that's absolutely awful with um, most all design tools, especially Photoshop. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, use CSS variables and things like that. It's going to let you be like, oh, I want to change this color or change the size and really iterate quickly. So. Yes. Yes, the, the use of variables in, in CSS will, will be immensely helpful there. All right, cool. Anything else you want to you cover before we sign off? I think we're all good. Awesome. Uh, you have been watching Keyframers, the animated collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to see more from David and I, pop on over to uh, 
patreon.com slash keyframers. Uh, there you can show your support for the show and uh, really help us out. Uh, you should also check out keyframe.rs. Uh, that's going to be uh, continue to be our landing page for all Keyframers content, including these uh, live streams eventually. There's a newsletter you can, or, or an email list you can sign up for there uh, to, to get some more information as we, as we have it. Yeah, and we accept submissions for future episodes. We, uh, we decide to do something completely new today, and so, you know, next time we might also do something completely new. So tweet us with any ideas you have and you could present questions or challenges to us, and we will talk to you on the air. That's right. And we are nearing the end of uh, this year's season. Uh, we will be taking a break uh, from, from the end of November uh, into, into January. Uh, so, uh, you know, tune, tune in for uh, the last episode uh, of this season next week. Uh, yep. we'll be we'll be doing some awesome animations and having some um, having a real fun time and then uh, in 2019 expect to see uh, a lot of really great content uh, and a, and an actual schedule uh, posted out so you uh, know what's coming up yeah no we have a lot of really great things planned for you all so yep keep an eye on that stay tuned keyframe.rs uh, and do be sure to uh, share this video and demo across all your social media platforms. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Until next time, adios, amigos. Adios.